Elkara Ham Radio presents a Time Machine Tuesday vintage video release. Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at Elkara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elkara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure to hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Good morning, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. And while we all have, uh, or at least some of us, have a little extra time on our hands, uh, I've been doing some more playing around with the little three-element Yagi that I have, a uh, little high-gain unit and uh, use it for the drive-on antenna test. I'm going to be revisiting that here at a, uh, a, a later time as well. But uh, I got to thinking about using the six-foot uh, poles, the aluminum poles you can get, uh, at least here in the U.S., uh, at some of the big box stores and even order online. That worked out really well to, uh, to be able to make up a simple and fast uh, drive-on system to uh, be able to uh, put up this Yagi here at the house as well. Uh, I've been thinking about uh, putting up a Yagi so I can try to hit uh, the Alcara Club 146.88 repeater. From where I live, it's about 61 miles away as the crow flies. And, uh, you know, it's definitely some hills and valleys uh, in the way. And my copper J-pole that's up about 25 feet, I can't really hit it. I can just barely hit it and receive a little bit now and then. So what I did is I put it up temporarily with uh, four of the six-foot poles with the overlap. That gives me about 21 feet probably in that range. Uh, I bought a uh, standoff arm uh, so that uh, the Yagi will be away from the metal pole. And um, got this thing set up, as you can see here, and um, put some uh, rubber on the arm so it can, uh, can grip a little better uh, with the brackets. And um, I've got a few snippets here where I switch between listening with the Yagi, which is uh, pretty copyable, and then I'll briefly switch over to the J-Pole, and the signal just about completely disappears. And so we'll let you listen to a few of these snips, and uh, then we'll be right back for the next segment. Have any other mobile call me? KI4RWO mobile. KI4RWO pin. You have any comments? Wanda and everybody on the net. Uh, it's been another busy day for me. I'm, I'm about 10 miles. From Hope everybody had a good day. And it looks like rain may be moving in for tomorrow. So um, I think I got everything caught up today. So maybe I'll have a, a lax day tomorrow and uh, sit back and watch it rain a little bit. So that do it with me. KI4 RWO. Be clear on the mobile. Yard 
Monday. All right, and we're back. So, um, as you can tell, there's a really dramatic difference between receiving in my location using even a small directional antenna like a, a two meter Yagi versus a omnidirectional J-pole. Now the J-pole, it works great for all these sort of regional uh, repeaters within 30, maybe 40 miles. But getting to the club repeater, you know, again, about 61 miles away, I can hear that repeater very scratchy sometimes, can't really have any chance of, uh, of really getting into it uh, on the return. Uh, we have Echolink here at Elcara, and I use that. I've used that quite a bit in the last uh, year or, or more, uh, and that's a great service for clubs that have that, of course. But uh, it's just been a personal challenge of mine to, uh, to see if I couldn't set something up where I might be able to check in with an actual radio. So uh, I have already ordered, uh, as we'll see here in a moment, a six-element Yagi, so a little bit more gain uh, in, the, in the forward direction. And uh, I'm going to try to, uh, to get that put up using, hopefully, uh, six. I've got six of these six-foot poles, uh, again, with the overlap. That would probably get me about 33 feet in the air. And hopefully a little extra height and a little extra gain uh, with this new antenna, antenna the MFJ-1852, um, I'll be able to directly uh, communicate with the repeater and uh, participate in our, uh, our nets and things. Uh, the Echolink, Echolink service is great. It's been a, a great service. And when I travel, uh, and when my brother travels, and even a few other folks, uh, it's really great to have that because then you know, really no matter where we are, we can check in as long as there's a, a reasonable form of internet. So I uh, just want to kind of show this off. A fairly short uh, video this week. I'm going to be doing some more work with these poles. I'm going to be revisiting the drive-on antenna mount. I've got a new mobile radio for the car. Uh, it's uh, as We had that video put up, a couple of videos on it. The uh, uh, Anytone uh, D578UV3 Pro. Uh, it's a 50 watt unit. My previous radio from Baofeng was a 25 watt unit. Uh, real inexpensive unit, but it, it, it's been very serviceable for me, and it'll go into one of my mobile kits. Uh, so we'll be talking about the uh, the 578 here pretty soon, some more. Revisit the uh, the drive-on antenna mount, and I'm going to be playing around with this uh, this sort of little do-it-yourself uh, mast using these poles here at home as well with the six element Yagi that's on the way. So that's pretty much it for this one, folks. We'll wrap it up. This is Chris, KY4CKP, for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.